Good afternoon. Good morning in some cases. We're wide across Canada. Thank you to those that have joined us. Uh, we had about 50, 50 or 55 people that had signed up for today. And again, we know many of them are going to be listening to this in the recorded uh, format, and we are going to record it, so we'll send it to everybody after. So thank you to those that have joined us live, and hello to those that are listening to this uh, after the fact and that we're sending it's, uh, this out to. So you're looking at, uh, it's a hot day here. This is the beautiful campus. It looks like today, um, and this is the Queen's campus, and uh, again, pretty exciting uh, place in Kingston, Ontario. Um, and any questions that you have as we're going through this, please feel free to throw them in the Q&A. Um, we're going to probably answer a lot of them, but if there's anything that uh, you think of, want to know, um, just throw it in now or at the end, um, and we're going to have an opportunity at the end to answer questions as well. So uh, I'm delighted that you're part of this. And this is a webinar for the Accelerated MBA for Business Graduates. And uh, we're going to give you a bit of an overview, and I'm also delighted that we have some people that are joining us today. Um, critical, um, you first of all know that you've got a Starbucks um, here at the business school, bottom right, you can see that. So that's the beautiful uh, hall that we've got here as part of the school. And uh, again, as you're checking the boxes on what do I look for in my MBA, uh, first is always Starbucks. Um, my name is Glenn Hollis, I'm the director of the Accelerated MBA program. Delighted to be with you uh, today here and tell you a little bit more. Um, I've got uh, two people that will join me. I'll ask you to go on camera, um, but uh, right now we're going to have them stay on mute and I'm going to introduce them more formally. We've got uh, Wincy Lee. Um, she is an MBA candidate. She's in the program. And I've got David Mendez, who is also an MBA candidate. So they can tell you real time uh, what they're feeling, what the experience um, was, is. Um, they are three quarters, better than three quarters of the way through the program. So they're in it neck deep and uh, they can certainly uh, answer any questions you've got about the application process, about the experience, but we'll talk at the end and, and really get a sense of, of who they are. So for me, let me first acknowledge that the Smith School of Business at Queen's University um, is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. And we're grateful to be able to live, to learn, and to play on these lands known as Turtle Island. Um, Queen's MBA, I say it quickly, but it's a Queen's MBA in one year while you work and in your home city. And we set this up now almost 15 years ago, designed for those that are working. You don't wanna leave your uh, work. You wanna stay in the city in which you live. We've got boardrooms I'll talk about across the country. We've also got some virtual boardroom opportunity. I mentioned the checklist. Um, first is the Starbucks, but the things that you should look for, you're going through the journey right now of, I wanna take my MBA. I hear a lot of people, you know, Wincy and David are, are in this camp. It's been on my bucket list. I know that I want it slash need it as I look at, you know, progressing through my career. Um, I'm a lifelong learner. There's a number of different reasons. But when you look for an MBA, look for flexibility. Again, I mentioned this not wanting to stop out from work. The diverse perspective, and Wincy and David are great examples of that. We've got people from right across industries um, you know, and backgrounds, which are really adding to the soup mix of this MBA and a delightful environment and, uh, and a team format. Preparation and support. You're gonna hear a lot about the support that you'll get from coaches, from the team itself, from the administration, from me, from our program manager, from your faculty. Those are things to look for as you're thinking about where do I do my MBA? The team approach is something uniquely that we have set up and we put this into place and I'll talk about it in more detail, but it really mirrors what's going on in the work world. And uh, you're gonna work on a team, a team for the full year, and you're gonna work with a team coach. And then there is the whole idea of connection and reputation. If you're going to invest this kind of money and time, look for a school that is well-connected, has a great reputation, uh, is known on the global stage, and uh, one that you're gonna have a strong network as you think about alumni, as you move your career forward. Flexibility, you're looking at time and cost, and this is opportunity cost as you think about your MBA. I wanna stay working um, and I don't wanna lose my seniority, my progression, but I wanna add to it with an MBA. And this MBA does that. It's one of the few where you're allowed to stay working. In fact, we encourage it. We get great and interesting backgrounds and experiences that really add to the value of the program. And we do this through a hybrid approach. Some of the session is going to be live and in Kingston at the Queen's Business School, most of it will be back in your boardroom, be it hard boardroom in a city or a virtual boardroom. 
we've got boardrooms across Canada, Canada, you know, widely, but uh, certainly on a virtual session is set up as well. Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, uh, downtown Toronto, Markham, Mississauga, Ottawa, Montreal, and virtual teams across Canada as well. And we're going to hear from Wincy and David talk about their boardroom and their team and hear more, you know, real from them as their experience. The perspective that we've got is culturally unique. It represents Canada, looks like Canada, uh, but it also has a geographical diversity as well. Uh, and what I mean by that is industries and companies that may be outside of the city that you're in that are doing some really interesting things across the country in all those boardrooms that I mentioned. So you get the diversity based on individuals, cultures, backgrounds, but also job titles, job functions, sectors, and by geography as well, ocean tech, agri tech, um, energy, alternative energy, uh, consumer packaged goods, banking, of course, as we'll talk about with Wincy and David, fintech, uh, you name it, a wide and diverse group that we've got, uh, many industries that are represented. So this is the group. This is uh, Wincy and David's year, and uh, they're in there. Um, and again, if I gave you enough time, you could pick them out. I know where they are. But this was as we set them up in January when they were here for two weeks, kicking off the year. This is them recently in June, now a couple of months ago. Um, and we had them outfitted in the tricolor of Queens. And they were running around the campus, as you remember, Wincy and David, when you're doing the Smith Challenge. And again, it's about bonding and building teams together, in addition to, of course, taking courses and uh, high performance teams is a, a part of that. This is a background, an overview. And again, this looks like David and Wincy. Um, their group was well represented in terms of different uh, Bachelor of Commerce or uh, BBAs or business degrees of some kind. Um, many across Canada, many in the US, some internationally and 103 students in the year. And as I mentioned, right across the board in terms of representing industries. I happen to have two bankers here with me, uh, but banking represents uh, probably about 30% of the uh, program itself. And we've got many, many from different industries, large companies, medium size entrepreneurs, startups, for-profit, not-for-profit, you name it. Um, on average, about seven years of work experience. Um, and again, Wincy and David represent that well. David a little more than that. Wincy now a little more than that as well. But right on that sweet spot of seven years. And as I mentioned, we've got virtual teams across Canada as well, which allows us to bring in some really interesting students that are doing some amazing things. They may not be in one of the, the large cities across Canada, but we've got, uh, we've got these folks in the program as well. And they add to the value of the team. The support piece I mentioned and again, any questions, feel free to throw that in the in the Q&A. And I've got a colleague, Elizabeth, who's well set up to help manage this. Thank you for setting this up, Elizabeth. Uh, the support here is, is quite unique. And again, very unique across any MBA that you'll do. Four facets of coaching. Team coaching, where right away the team coach, professional team coach, works with your team to set up the rules of engagement, the charter, how we work together, and really bonds and builds the team. You're going to do team review peer reviews rather, halfway through on your teams. Executive coaching, you're going to have access to your own executive coach, somebody that's been in business, a business of different kinds, 20 plus years, and you can work with them as a mentor and something that you don't often get access to until later in your career. Lifestyle coaching, and this is fit to lead. Looking at leaders as we're building leaders, that are balanced on nutrition, fitness, and mental health. And we feel that's an important part of a well-rounded leader. And then finally, career coaching. And this is a coach that you'll work with dedicated to the Accelerated MBA program. And you will work with this coach individually, as well as some team format sessions as well, but individually hours where you work with them on a number of different things. And Wincy and David can speak to this. In fact, Wincy changed jobs, and we'll talk about that um, as she was in her MBA, but you can work with your team coach on primarily, you know, folks that are interested in how do I move my career along where I am? How do I be seen as a high potential? How do I accelerate? How do I get exposure to different job opportunities, promotions, activities, et cetera? David was an example of a promotion. And we can talk to David about his uh, promotion or Wincy about her pivot. Um, because we have many students that are interested in pivoting to either different industries or different brands. And uh, we know that uh, Wincy moved from RBC to TD, and she can talk about that.
But there's many different things that are part of this coaching opportunity. Exposure to different companies, industries, uh, working with your coach on a number of different elements. Some people apply for jobs that are available. Uh, many interested companies looking at uh, the MBAs um, that have work experience, are working, and are getting their Queen's MBA. So lots to work with when it comes to coaching, but it's very unique. And again, we have people, and this is just a small representation of different companies and brands that people are a part of, um, you know, within Wincy and David's year, um, this current year of accelerated MBAs. But again, we've got people from many different industries. A big part of what we feed is the alumni group. And you're going to work with alumni uh, now and as you work out through your career. The team approach is important. We patterned this after a study that was conducted a couple of years ago now, put out by McKinsey Consulting. It was called Decoding Leadership, and it looked at those 20 plus characteristics that are important for leaders. Two thirds of those are skills based on teams, uh, building a team, motivating a team, communicating a vision, activating that vision, dealing with diversity, managing conflict, uh, engaging a team and moving them forward, all of those different attributes that leaders have. Teams are unique and an important part. As you're checking the boxes on which MBA to do, reputation is important. We don't chase reputation when it comes to certain publications. We find ourselves at the top or near top of many of these publications in Canada, U.S., internationally. What we do chase is membership in two organizations, one being the AACSB and the other being the EFMD Equus, a, a global uh, entity and one being a North American. And you must earn your membership in these two organizations every year by delivering on results. Did I achieve the learning outcomes that we set out? What's the feedback on faculty? Are they active when it comes to research? Are they active when it comes to consulting? Um, how are students rating the program? Many different attributes where we need to deliver and prove that we are worthy of being part of these organizations. And we're very proud of being a part of uh, the global membership within business schools. So think about the reputation of your school as you're thinking about your MBA. I see we've got questions that are starting in the Q&A, throw them in. I mentioned the, the connections that you'll make um, in your year, um, as well as when you leave. And you're going to have a membership you know, for life when it comes to Queens in the business school. We've got 180,000 plus Queens alumni, faculty of med, faculty of engineering, law, arts, education, science, you name it. In business, there's 26,000 26, alumni from the Queens School of Business that have graduated or are going through like Wincy and David. And many of them are in your city, probably in your industry, in your company even. And uh, you're going to run into them. You're going to hire them. You're going to be hired by. You're going to, you know, uh, obviously work with them in some capacity. So we build out this program through a hybrid approach. And Wincy and David can speak to this. Some time spent here at the Queen's Business School, knowing you're working. We front end it with two weeks. We've got a week in June and we've got a week in December. All of the in-between, most of your live lectures are delivered virtually in your boardroom uh, during our, our time with you. We'll talk about that in a minute in terms of how we do that. When it comes to the requirements, we're looking for an undergraduate business degree. We're looking for a commerce or related field, minimum of two years work experience. And some have two years. You need to have at least two years, most being on average in that seven year, some 10, 15. So it's a wide variety of people in terms of work experience. No GMAT is required because you've got successful completion of your undergraduate in business and you are working. And those are important elements when it comes to really adding to the content of the team and to uh, the program itself. The invitation to uh, talk with a human is there. Um, I'm going to put up uh, a name of Carrie uh, Fraser at the end of this. And Carrie is uh, absolutely open to speaking to you about your application um, and letting you know, you know, obviously about the program a little more and then eventually getting to me and talking about, you know, your, uh, your addition to the team and, and what you want to get out of the team and out of this MBA. Um, and the application process is fairly straightforward. Uh, you need references, you need your transcripts. And of course, uh, you know, we're going to meet and have a hard, heartful and thoughtful conversation about this MBA. And, you know, is it the right one for you? And, and are you right for the program? Because we want successful 
and engaged alumni as part of this. And we've got alumni, as I say, right across Canada and more widely now that we've opened up to the virtual teams in many, many interesting cities doing some interesting things. Many Indigenous students that are now part of some growing Indigenous communities um, that are part of the program. And we've got, uh, you know, a, a number of folks uh, across Canada in smaller cities as well. This is the campus. I showed you this before. It's almost 100 degrees here today, so probably the same heat you're feeling in many parts of the country. This is your business school, which sits um, on the campus, a beautiful blend of, of old meets new um, and a wonderful place where Wincy and David have been. Um, and in between, when you're here at the, at the, the campus, uh, we've got a setup in the basement. Uh, we've got two studios, state-of-the-art, pattern after Harvard Business School. Um, and you can see the perspective of the technician looking into the studio. It's basically, you know, NASA control, if you will, high tech. Um, and in the studio, we've got cameras that are set up. We've got eight cameras in each of the studios, each of the two studios, smart boards. And this is the perspective of the professor. And she's looking at all of the different boardrooms, including Toronto boardroom, I uh, can see where we've got, uh, you know, folks across the country in Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton. Our virtual teams are represented as well. Montreal, Ottawa, Mississauga, Markham. When you ask a question, so you're sitting around your boardroom as Wincy and David are, sitting around the boardroom team or virtually connected in. You can see the other teams. The other teams can see you. You've got digital hand raising. Professor here asked, um, you know, to uh, hear from one of the groups uh, up raised her hand, Jackie Hilton at the Calgary Airport Authority. She's the manager of cost sustainability and, uh, and innovation up pops her, her background. And you can see in the center there, as all of the teams can, she is answering during the live lectures that we have every other Sunday and half day Monday. So twice a month. In fact, we've got a lecture session coming up for Wincy and David this weekend. And they're going to have a Sunday, two sessions, morning and an afternoon lecture, and then a Monday morning half day lecture as well. And that's how you do the majority of the program. But we do front load it with uh, our two weeks here in Kingston, where you complete two courses, start two others, high performance teams, resilience mapping and training, networking, team building, private hotel, great food, all of that. Um, but this is the checklist. Think about your MBA. We're going to hear from David and Wincy very soon, shortly. Um, throw in any questions you've got, but think of this as a checklist. Starbucks, does it have one? Flexibility, diverse perspective, prep and support, a team approach, you know, critical when you think about working on teams. And then, of course, am I buying into a school that is strongly connected, you know, as you think of ongoing and for life? And do they have a strong reputation, as I am proudly saying, where I got my MBA from? So think about those elements. I love to hear from Wincy and and, uh, and David. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview for you in terms of a bit of their background. I managed to cobble through and find out as I went through and interviewed them now well, a year ago, same spot you were in before they started in January. So I'm delighted that they're part of it. Wincy Lee, I mentioned her recent change to TD from RBC. Six years of retail and business and commercial banking experience, working with business owners as part of their business journey. She can talk about that helping them grow and expand. Wincy has spent most of her banking career at RBC, almost six years, and has moved to TD as the commercial account manager earlier this year. Ask her about that transition. And again, working with clients, she's keen on mentoring and supporting women in business, a strong focus of our program here. As you think about uh, women of influence, Wincy, you think about Forte Foundation, think about our faculty, our dean, a proud woman uh, who can talk more about uh, her focus on that area. But again, uh, she's been recently accredited uh, Women in Enterprise as a banker at TD, as far as the first Women in, in Enterprise banker in her team. Uh, Wincy is responsible to deliver the tools, the resources, and advice to engage and support female business owners, a strong and important piece. David Mendez, welcome David from RBC. Again, a former colleague of Wincy's, good friends and colleagues in the program. David has 12 years of experience in the financial services sector. Most recently, David's been given the opportunity to lead one of RBC's largest branches in the GTA. David has spent time across many lines of business in his nine years uh, tenure at RBC, ranging from leading development of RBC's newest and largest CRM platform that will unify all the client-facing advisors, 
to managing the relationships of the bank's most profitable clients on the desk of the mid-market commercial, specializing in supply chain, and finally providing financial support to banks' uh, personal clients. David was recently awarded, proudly, the RBC Leo Award and Global Citizen Award at RBC's highest level of recognition uh, on level of services he delivers to his clients in his, in his communities. They're great students. Uh, they're a wonderful part of the team, colleagues in the program, and uh, we're going to hear more from them. So I see we've got some questions in there. But uh, David Wincy, come on off mute. Um, and uh, first of all, thank you for taking part in today. Good to see you both. Thanks, Glenn. Great. And again, um, you know, I get lots of questions about the program, as we always do. Um, and, you know, the question that I, I get, and you you don't have a perspective of it, you know, different from other MBAs. I do. I did mine at Schulich, so I know the differences. But why don't you just talk a little bit about I mean, you're both on a team and the team is important as far as this program. Um, and I'll start with Wincy in terms of just, you know, briefly your experience on the team. Um, you know, how was that? How is that? I guess you're you're sitting here in September. How is the experience for you? Yeah, thanks, Glenn. That's a good question. I think our team is very close together. Um, like we're in Team Vancouver in the West Coast, and um, we're very grateful that all of our personalities are very similar. Uh, we have six people in our team, and everyone come from a diverse background with HR and three bankers and two CPAs in the team. Where, you know, we bounce a lot on ideas, and we respect everyone's perspective and that brings in you know a true team approach where we listen to each other's feedback and um, I think we all get along very well and we recently just have a little team um, event like quarterly event um, we went for laser tag and we went for like hot pot just to get together outside of school and I think we really enjoy spending time together and we celebrate all the wins uh, with all the you know assignments that we've got back and we debrief and we just really enjoy working together so it's been great. That's great. And again, I often hear that blend of, you know, we get the work done, but there's, you know, social and networking elements. And, you know, as we bring you together during these live sessions, you've been at two, we've got another one lined up in December, but that's about trying to cross pollinate with, you know, all of the other teams across Canada as well. And of course, you know, as you'll eventually do soon do um, with other programs, you know, as an alum, David, your experience on the team, tell us a little bit about that and your team, if you would. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Yeah, so it's it's similar to to Wincy's. Uh, I can tell you without a doubt, if I didn't have the team, I would not be able to complete this MBA. Um, you don't realize it at the start um, because a lot like that two week intensive. You go over how do you build a high performance team. You go over introducing each other as your teammates, um, but you don't realize how much you're going to rely on them in the coming months, especially with the the front loaded workload at, at the MBA and you very quickly get up to a speed where you trust you know your teammates almost implicitly that the the quality of work and that everything you're doing is for the good of the team and I've felt that across our team we've gelled really well we have very different experiences like I'm the only banker on the team um, we have somebody in in the steel industry we have somebody in the auto industry we have somebody in the makeup in, in the manufacturing industry so like very different experiences and then some have you know cfa some are more analytical some are marketing more specialists so really leveraging each other's strengths um to bring out the best of the team um it doesn't come without its challenges right there are challenges on every team um but having so many like-minded individuals that are driven to be successful makes it easier to overcome some of those challenges um, and ultimately, it helps you grow, right? Because the, the MBA is meant to mimic what you go through in, in your careers and in your personal life. So, you know, you'll have teams that you work with, and not always is every single member on that team going to be, you know, call it a high performer or gelling with the team or, or bringing that level of quality um, to the work they deliver. So helping you go through that in, in more of a, a lower risk uh, environment uh, really helps from an experience perspective and, I, and I've taken that to my new team in in how I deliver messaging as, as their leader. So, For sure. Yeah. And David, stay on when I talk about the, 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 the team side of things. Um, and again, you're right. I mean, conflict is inevitable or, you know, a healthy tension. 
Um, you set out the charter right at the beginning of the team, you know, right at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, feedback. Tell us a little bit about feedback from your perspective, you know, that, that halfway point through on the team side. Yeah. So, I mean, so from a, from a team's perspective, like within the team, we have uh, different types of meeting where we provide feedback, you know, very uh, quickly after an assignment. How did that assignment go? What could we do better? And then we use that to, to become better throughout the year. And I found that approach of consistent feedback has been beneficial for the growth of the entire team. Because I've seen some of my teammates that maybe weren't as vocal becoming more vocal and, and like their their perspective is so valuable that sometimes somebody like me who is a talker and who can sometimes overwhelm a, a conversation is like, oh wow, I didn't think of that perspective. And now that they raised it, you know, our assignment or our work is going to be that much better. Um, and then from from the queens to to the students' perspective, the feedback is consistent as well, right? You have your your career coach, you have your executive coach, um, you have you, uh, uh, Declan, our program manager. I don't know if he'll be the next program manager, um, but you have so many points. And then beyond that, there's also surveys on on how can the program be yeah. made better. And what I really liked about that is that the students themselves providing that critical feedback, we actually saw a change within the program and almost immediately, which I would have thought that would have taken a little bit longer. Like for instance, some there were some parts where it did feel a little bit uh, too loaded up in, in terms of deliverables for assignments. And you know, having given that feedback to, to you and to, to Barry, the uh, associate dean, um, within a week, I think, then we had assignment deadlines changed and, and yep. different things had changed where we were like, okay, that makes a lot more sense now. We can work through it a bit better. So I really like that feedback loop as well on top of the feedback that we have within the team. That's fair. That's fair. Wincy, tell me a little bit about coaching. Again, you know, I think everybody should look at return on investment. Um, whatever MBA you do, I mean, you're going to go to a reputable school. You know, you're going to be spending money. Um, significant investment. Talk a little bit about the ROI, or at least your experience, if not the ROI, but when it comes to the coaching, different coaching elements that you've been a part of have actually pulled on used. Yeah, for sure. So um, I really like the executive coaching part because you have till um, you have 18 months to spend time with your coach, basically from the start in January until, you know, right before you graduate. And um, if I'm not mistaken, there are four hours where you can pick whenever you would like to, you know, meet with her. So it, you know, according to your schedule. Um, so it's very flexible and you get introduced to her in the January session and you can communicate with her as per um, your, you know, a choice. So for me, how I like to spend my time with is I've spent two sessions with her so far and I pre-booked with her every quarter for now. And I would like to spend majority of the time um, after I finished the program for either improve my, you know, self-confident leadership skills. It's like essentially like a consultant where you work on one-on-one -on -one individually. And um, uh, she's very open-minded and she's always available when I meet her. For example, when I'm pivoting in my career, when um, he reached out, a recruiter reached out um, earlier in the program, um, I even speak with her on things, how I could improve, um, in terms of interviewing skills or how I can improve my self-confidence, leadership, et cetera. And she's very accommodating. And um, I really feel like it's a safe space for me to share my experience. And, you know, she also give her feedback. So I think overall, the level of support is there and just needed to utilize all these resources that put it out there and just take advantage of, you know, what you sign up for. Again, as Glenn has mentioned, it's a 12 month MBA program and there's a lot of resource out there. There's a lot of support. So just, you know, really make sure you utilize everything. And um, some questions that I've received like um, for um, peers saying like, oh, you're in West Coast, like, you know, are you missing something? But it's really up to how you utilize all these resources that's put it up there for you. Yeah. David, same question to you around, you know, coaching. Um, four facets, executive team, you know, career coaching, lifestyle coaching. What have, what have you used? How have you dipped into that? Um, so I've used, we've obviously, obviously we've used all of them. And in particular for me, there's been a few points where I thought um, was very valuable. One was the, the 360 assessment that we did um, on how 
you view yourself, how the team views yourself, and you know how potentially any direct report because you don't have any NDA, but how they would view you. And it was eye opening to see there was there was a lot of areas where I knew where I was strong in, and the team also felt that way. But there there was areas where maybe I thought I was weak or I was strong, and the team thought opposite. And there was quite a big disparity. So it's really an eye opener for kind of your blind spots to make you a little bit better. Um, more from the executive coach is um, she provided me a lot of, and I, I've set up a similar structure to, to Lindsay, but she's provided me a lot of strategic advice on um, how do I continue in the, in the high potential path. And as a high potential, I, I fe it feels like a lot of individuals are always trying to do everything, right? How do you do your role and then volunteer for everything, for every initiative and every program that you can just to get your awareness out and to show that you can do it, right? But that's not going to get you to that next level. And what she's provided me is being more strategic about where do I put that extra effort in because you're going to get to a point, and it kind of came to that near the start of this year, where you just don't have capacity to do it all, right? You don't have enough time in a day um, to do it all. So how do you choose what areas you want to be a part of within, you know, within the NDA and then also professional. Um, and that's been very valuable because um, kind of where I want to take my career path next is leading more down an HR path and mm. being purposeful with where I volunteer my extra time and how I, you know, take on those extra curriculars while doing an MBA, which at points can take it, you know, it takes 15 to 20 hours a week, right? And it's challenging. But it also helps you learn. And I think one of the biggest, maybe um, unintentional or intentional, uh, I defer to you, Glenn, is that it teaches you how to be a lot more purposeful with your time. Because as an executive, so I want to become an executive, you don't have time to necessarily on your, say, your way into work to scroll through uh, Facebook uh, reels or Instagram reels or whatever app that the new kids are using now. Um, how can you use that time to be more uh, uh, productive? So for me, that's a real eye opener where I was wasting two hours a day prior to the MBA starting, mm -hmm. you know, in my commute. I started using that time for my MBA uh, studies and to start doing work. And then I found that the rest of my day didn't seem so overwhelming. And I was able to be, continue to remain a high, high performer at work and a high potential and deliver on all deliverables for the MBA. And I found that to be very valuable. Right. Being purposeful and being strategic, which is kind of the advice that my executive coach gave me. Yeah, that, that, that's fair. And again, you know, you're not finished yet either. I mean, you've got lots of time. And as, as Wincy, as you mentioned, after you finish the courses all the way to when you convocate in terms of timing. And then, you know, again, you've got a lifetime membership with the Career Centre as you think about that opportunity. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let me just go to the, the audience. We've got a few questions in. Um, and, and again, part of what I said I would do is, you know, help people understand the application process, hints and tricks and things like that. Um, following completion is the degree noted um, as an MBA or an AMBA? It's an MBA. It's an MBA from the uh, Queen's University Smith School of Business. Uh, GPA, yeah, we need at least a 2.7. You'll see core courses. Um, you know, Wincy uh, and David had core courses as it did their other colleagues. Um, and you need at least a 2.7. Many have into the threes, high threes, and some into the fours. But again, uh, we want to maintain the quality of the program for sure. So that's important. Um, if there are grades that tend to be softer, there are opportunities to uh, retake a course online before you start the program. And again, you know, various reasons why you may have a softer grade in, you know, accounting, finance, marketing, organizational behavior, stats, whatever it might be. Uh, do some applicants still send in their GMAT scores? They do. And, and that is looked at for sure. We don't require it. But again, if you've got a GMAT score that you're proud of and you feel that's an important piece to your file, absolutely send that in um, for sure. Um, for on-site components, Jan, June, and December, are accommodations situated on the campus, uh, near the campus? Your downtown Kingston, everything's within a stone's throw. Uh, we put our students uh, up in, um, you know, uh, best hotels in Kingston. For sure, we keep reviewing them, as uh, Wincy and David said, in terms of making sure that we're meeting the standards, uh, top level food, you know, everything that we can do on site, off site. But you are here at the business school, um, you know, most of the time and, and or on the campus. We are at the med school for some courses as well. 
Um, so that's what we try to do and get you near the campus um, for sure as part of that. Um, and again, you've got buses, um, executive buses, Gale buses, which are the team buses that take you to and fro anywhere you want to go to. Um, and again, I'm just looking here. Uh, are students able to utilize multiple boardroom learning centers throughout the duration? You are assigned to a boardroom. Wincy mentioned Vancouver, David Toronto. Um, but you have the opportunity if you're traveling. If David finds himself in Montreal traveling with RBC or Wincy's in Calgary, you know, at a TD meeting, um, she can go in the boardroom there and or occasionally there's virtual access opportunities as well. Um, do teams change over the course of the year to allow that variety opportunity? Mostly no, but there is one elective that you take, as Wincy and David know. You have the opportunity to take entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship, and we change up the teams intentionally to cross-pollinate a bit. And again, the area of focus and interest that you're, uh, you know, you're, you're focused on. Um, but that's an opportunity as well. Um, and I will turn it over shortly again to our colleagues, but I'll field a, more, a couple more questions. Are you able to comment the percentage of students uh, who are working parents? How did they manage coursework, life balance? Are Wincy and David able to comment on this? Uh, you know what, David, Wincy, talk about balance and talk about managing all of that. I don't have the exact percentage that are, you know, um, that have a family, but quite a sizable chunk um, have a family or a new family. In fact, we had two of your colleagues, as you'll remember, David and Wincy, they were actually had fresh babies they brought along um, and we accommodated them with an extra hotel room or a larger hotel room. Um, so, David, talk about that. Yeah, I think I can I can start get us kicked off here. Glenn. So um, I know most of you know, at least because I post my pictures everywhere, but that's actually my daughter. She just turned two. Um, so as you can imagine, a busy household, um, I think part of it, um, like how you found this life balance is is first, it starts before you even start the MBA. You need to have a really kind of heart to heart, um, you know, pointed question or pointed discussion with your spouse, if, if you have a spouse or any supporting members um, in your family, and really set it out that this is going to be a challenge both for you taking that MBA and also a challenge for for your for your support partner, right? Because it it's going to take you away from your family, and, and that's that's normal. Like this is a big commitment. You're trying to get an MBA in 12 months while working. Um. So for me, how I found that balance is first setting that stage, right? I I deferred my MBA by a year because my wife was pregnant um, with my daughter when I was going to do the MBA the the first time. Um, January 2022 instead of I started in January 2023. So we purposefully planned it for a year out so that we would both be comfortable as new parents. Um, but having said that, that's this is where this work life or the life balance came in for me is um, as as the individual is where I found I was wasting time at the start of the MBA. I thought I would have more time and I was using my evenings and afternoons um, outside of work hours to to complete you know uh, MBA schoolwork and. How I found my balance is to be more purposeful with my time. So um, at work, right, going to your manager and, and sharing with your, your manager um, or your team that, you know, this will be a challenge for you and you're going to be maybe a little bit um, uh, not as, as in, involved with maybe some team meetings or, or deliverables and you'll need, to, you'll need some support there. And being okay with saying no to some meetings as long as you're not urgent and I'd leave that to all of you to know where you're required and needed versus where you're just wanted um, and being purposeful with that those meetings so for me I started you know using my my train ride when I started the MBA it's different for me now but using my train ride to work and home from work to do school work so that it allowed me that time you know a couple hours to spend with my with my wife and daughter before bedtime and before the evening routine of going back at it for, for school work started. Um, and then also being protecting my lunch. So for instance, this call today is on my lunch that I protect this lunch hour. I don't accept meetings. I don't accept uh, uh, kind of walk in traffic. And I allow myself that freedom to do school work, right? So this is where I was talking about being really purposeful with your time. Um, but that's, that's how it was for me, setting the stage early. That's gonna be a challenge for everyone, including your all your support uh, people 
um, but also just trying to be more purposeful with your time. Find those areas where you're maybe not being as productive and seeing if you can, right? It's not easy for everyone. It can't, it's not easy just to be on, on 24 hours a day, but for a short period, you almost have to be okay with that and, and, and get through it. And, and then I'm sure when I'm, when we're in December, I'm going to be, you know, looking back and how did I do all of that? Mm -hmm. And where I have so much extra time now, yeah. what am I going to yeah. do with all this extra time? Yeah. Um, but that's how it was for me. Yeah. And, and Wincy, uh, you know, we'll hear from you in terms of the successfully balancing both your studies, you know, home life, work life. And, and uh, David and Wincy, you know, I give you a full year to glance. So you see what the 12 months look like, highs and lows of that, assignments do, heavy times, the support you have to call on all of that. But Wincy, what was your experience around this idea of successfully balancing both studies, life, work, all of that? Yeah, um, so I am very different from David. I don't have a family here. My family are all in Hong Kong and I'm here by myself. So as you can imagine, you know, balancing work and school and friends and family, like sometimes you really get stretched thin and there are days where it's okay to feel like tired or stressed or burned out because, you know, ultimately it's a 12 month MBA, as Glenn has always mentioned. Um, I think David mentioned a lot of good points, just really using your time like smartly and strategically, like similar to you, David, like I also commute to work and it's like an hour, 15 minutes. And I just utilize that time for, you know, school readings, um, catching up with emails, like reading news and really utilizing that hour that you have in transit to be smart of your time. I and mean, also, you know, as we all are doing the program, like your, our employers know that we're high potentials and we are talented individuals in this uh, workforce. So, you know, just being transparent with your manager. Um, I'm sure a lot of the managers are very supportive and understand you're in the program. So like they will pull you in meaningful meetings and if you can participate in some things that work like, you know, social committees, like, which is totally fine. And really learning how to say no, as David has mentioned as well, like really how to use your time wisely and strategically in this, you know, in this whole year. Um, for me, I also had the opportunity to take one of the summer enrichment program, uh, which is the fleet management course. This is an elective where you get to meet people around the Smith School of Business. So I think one of the questions were, do teams change over time in the course of the year and allow you know, different varieties to mingle with others? And I have this opportunity to take this course and you know meet some new friends from Master in Finance, full-time MBA, EMBA program, and really learn from them because um, while I'm tied in Team Vancouver for the 12 months with my core courses, um, I, you know, talking about using your time wisely, like I did, you know, spend three hours um, of every Wednesday for five weeks in the last couple of months to take this fleet management course where I've met a lot of wonderful individuals. Um, and this fleet management course is definitely optional, but I've learned so much, um, you know, from other individuals and from the professor about things that are uh, more of you know linear regression, which I don't learn in my core um, AMBA program, and you know what, how do um, you what what to consider with like fleet expansion or like uh, route expansion, things like that. So um, I really appreciate this program where you get the opportunity to meet other individuals in different courses. And again, I can't um, emphasize more about how to take advantage of all these resources in front of you. And that's, that's really the big part is taking advantage of that. I mean, the summer enrichment courses you talked about, you know, are available, you know, no cost to our AMBA students. Um, you know, there was a digital product uh, management component as well. Um, one of the questions we have here is the cost. Uh, 81000 is the cost. Um, and again, there's financing opportunities you'll see on the, the website. Go to that. I mean, the CRA recognized this as full-time school, writing that off, um, dipping into your RSPs. Um, bank loans that are available, I recommend TD or RBC um, as you talk to them. Um, and again, you know, attractive terms and, you know, with respect to payback after you graduate, all different kinds of things for sure that are available. All that's included, um, you know, when we look at what's included in that, everything except your travel to and from Kingston three times a year, but everything else, hotel, food, books, curriculum, uh, you know, faculty, coaching, um, you know, the, 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 all the networking components. Um, we do a boot camp in advance. You know, we talked about how do I get back into it? You heard David say, you know, the, the discipline of setting time and getting back into it. 
and being very thoughtful and mindful about that. We do a boot camp that gets everybody back into that mindset as well. And that's included in the program costs. Um, and we've got some entrance scholarships that we uh, are, make part of the program. Wincy's involved with women in business. We've got a Forte Foundation scholarship, Black scholarship, Indigenous scholarship, Dean's Entrance scholarship. But again, you look at the ROI and you consider that. And uh, again, I know David and Wincy can talk about how they've used their MBA as far as progression, either pivoting to TD from RBC or uh, the promotion to, you know, run the shops at Don Mills uh, branch, which is pretty significant. And it has a Starbucks as well. Um, but uh, David, did you want to comment on this? Yeah, I just wanted to mention something quickly. Is also look at your, your organization um, uh, for corporate sponsorship. I know it's not common and it's not always widely known, even like within an RBC, like the organization like RBC, it's not easy to uncover the process and the application uh, period and requirements, but definitely worth it. You know, I probably put in um, 30 hours into my application, but I was able to get the full uh, program uh, corporate sponsorship for, for the MBA, which it does make a big difference. You know, you are investing in yourself, but a lot of organizations will invest in your education with you. Good, good point. Good point. Again, I want to wrap it up mindful and respectful of the time. And as David said, he set this lunch hour, so we'll be sharp to it. A couple more questions. Um, accommodations included, I see that. Um, yes, absolutely. The three times a year, food, etc. cetera. Um, Monday and sun Sunday and Monday sessions, um, you're either on the virtual team or you're in your boardroom in person. You know, the occasion where you have to miss that, that can be accommodated. Uh, opening spring and closing sessions are absolute. Yes, they're absolute. And you must be in person. Um, those are critical bonding moments and networking. And we do high performance teams, resilience mapping and training. Um, you're going to take in those two live courses. You're going to physically meet your professors. You're going to meet all your coaches. You're going to meet all your um, colleagues. These are very important times. And, and you know, I, I'd say a high part of and your team support like Declan, who is going to be there, um, me um, and other support team members as well. So that's an important part of your return on investment. Um, formal graduation when you complete it? Oh, yes. Uh, you're walking across the stage in gowns. Yes, is the answer. Um, and that happens in June. And we're going to see uh, Wincy and David, maybe, um, across that stage. I'm quite sure they will. But uh, yes, there is a formal uh, graduation with the Executive MBA and uh, MBA of the Americas and full-time MBA program. Um, financial aid, please look up on the site. And yes, there's things that are available. Uh, are there any factors to inform the team on formation? Yeah, we look at backgrounds of teams. We look, we do a psychological analysis. You'll do that. It's kind of like a Myers-Briggs, the big five, if you remember that, David and Wincy. Um, we look at backgrounds. We try not to put two RBCers together. We try not to put two TD, TDers together. Um, and we put intentionally people with diverse backgrounds. And you heard Wincy and David talk about the teams that they're on as well. So that's the end of the questions. And if you've got any questions after, David, Wincy, I'm, I'm sure you're okay if people reach out to you via LinkedIn. It, would that be okay? Definitely. Good. Thank you for that. So I really want to thank uh, Wincy and David for being a part of this and, uh, you know, really appreciate it. And I'm glad you're in the program and you're strong ambassadors that represent well. So thank you to that. Uh, to both of you for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. It's excellent. And, and Elizabeth, thanks in the background. Thank you to everybody that joined us. If you're listening to this in post, um, again, feel free to reach out. Um, again, we've got people that are you know listening and ready. I mentioned Carrie Fraser, um, who was the program manager for many years prior to this, prior to taking uh, Declan taking over, but she can answer any questions, help you with the process, talk to you, et cetera. There's no charge to apply. Carrie's a human. She's not a bot. So she'll be uh, there and alive and available. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to Elizabeth and to all uh, that joined us today. And of course, to Wincy and David. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good day.